Today I'm going to answer a couple questions, um, but before I get started, I would like to ask you a favor. If you're passing through to watch this video today, um, if you watch it all the way through, and even if you don't, even if you just pass through to watch for these couple seconds here before clicking out, would you please leave me a breadcrumb below? Just leave a little comment. Just say boo. <laughs> um, I'd, I'd like to get an idea of, of the YouTubers in particular that um, are watching this video. And if you happen to be watching from somewhere where it has been linked, uh, the light workers, uh, that's the only other one I can think of actually that I, I don't already know everyone there. Um, so if you're watching from either of those two places, would you please just, again, leave a little breadcrumb for me down below to show me that you passed through. I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Um, the first question uh, is a question about energy uh, and running energy. It's a Kundalini-related question. Um, and for those of you who are unfamiliar with this, I'm just going to give a little bit of background. When the kundalini becomes active, and most particularly when she starts rising, uh, she runs electrically through the body, and uh, this is felt as an electrical current running through the physical body system. Um, there's various different types of energetic currents that run. And one in particular, uh, when it comes across blocks, will shoot erratically through the body. Um, it would be something similar to receiving uh, an electrical impulse or jolt, sort of like, um, I don't know if you've ever watched this before, uh, but if someone uh, is a paraplegic and, and has no use of their legs, uh, there's this uh, machine that they can get hooked up onto that sends electrical impulses into the nerves in the legs to um, sort of exercise the nerves to get them to fire. And when this happens, you'll see the person's legs jump um, or swim or, or shake just briefly while the electrical current is being directed in toward the nerves. And this is what happens. Um, in some instances, it's my estimation that this happens when there are blockages, when the electrical currents are, are hitting blocks. I've experienced this since the beginning uh, of the, the kundalini beginning to rise, and although it's much less now, uh, it's, the situation is still present, and the question has been asked, what what do I do to help release the energy, to help free the energy? Um, the first part of this is, is simple. If I cannot run the energy, I do have to release it manually. <laughs> and the person who asked the question will understand what I mean by this. Um, in that event, what I experience is a lowering of my energy and a lessening of my consciousness expanding experiences, meaning I will come lucid in non-physical environments much, much less often. Um, if I can figure out a way to run the energy, then my experiences are just off the chart. They happen regularly, ongoingly, um, new stuff happens, meaning they keep opening out and opening out and opening out, um, I suspect endlessly. And I have for myself figured out a way to run the energy. A part of these uh, um, things that I do, I've been relaying since the beginning. Drank lots of water. Lots of water. <laughs> Just endlessly. Um, I really watch your diet. Uh, I move toward all organics. Um, I don't really feel there's any necessary uh, need to lose 
weight. I myself uh, am, am a big girl, you know, five foot six, one sixty. <laughs> um, so that really doesn't play into it. I don't think that you need to eat less, or you know, it's it's doesn't have anything to do with anything like that. Just keeping the diet as pure as possible, inwardly listening for what the right thing is. Uh, what the right thing for me ended up being was to take away a lot of my solid food meals and move toward liquid meals, and I make a lot of um, superfood smoothies and, and things along this line. I will post those for you. Uh, eventually, uh, it's sort of hard for me to do in the household setup I'm in right now, uh, but I, I will get those through to you. Um, so water, all organic, you know, just paying attention to the diet, and getting out in the sun for a little bit every day. These three things really help. At nighttime, I get in the bath, uh, off in a salt bath. You know, I come back into uh, my sleep space area. No lights at this point. Uh, I may turn on an audio book or, you know, listen to my recent favorite Terrence McKenna. I can just listen to him forever, it seems. Um... <sighs> funny too because <laughs> I don't use psychedelics for my experiences but I sure do appreciate all the work that he did and almost everything he has to say. So you know I'll listen to a little audio that's that's related to uh, the experiences I'm having so I can go into the night in the right frame of mind and before I go to sleep, right before I go to sleep, about 15-20 minutes prior, I will uh, do some yoga some mm, precise postures. I kick up into headstand, um, stand on my shoulders, kick up into shoulder stand, release it over into plow, come out and do some reclined twists, just really get the spine ringed out, and stand up in Uttanasana, just an easy standing forward fold. Now what these are doing are um, Sending the energy up and releasing the spine. So mm, the, the, the mm, most efficient way I have found to do this is the plow pose. And I'll put a link to that down below so you can see. But essentially you just lay down on the ground. You put your feet up and then you kick them over your head onto the ground. Okay, so it's real simple. Um... But I go into it and come out of it in the precise way I just said. And this releases my spine to where I'm not getting these misfires of energy through my body, most particularly through the pelvic floor and legs. Um, okay, so I, I again, I'll post those links down below, and I hope this answered your question. Um, the next question was... Just a, a, a simple sort of personal question. It was asked, um, how lucid dreaming and OBEs, you know, just opening my consciousness out beyond the physical territory, is um, what effect that's having on my daily life. And uh, the biggest effect that it's having on my daily life, and I know that you're asking this, because in this new series, I'm focusing on that, and it seems like I'm forgetting this physical reality I'm living in day to day. Um, I know it can seem that way, but I'm not. And there is a huge, huge effect. These experiences, the lucid dreams, OBEs, astral projections, are having on my daily life. Um, in just an easy sentence, I can say that what's happening is I'm experiencing the end, the fading and the end of object reality. Um, in the physical reality, I experience myself to the outside edge of my skin 
that's the end of me. <laughs> Everything else is something other than me. That's the physical experience. Since my consciousness has begun expanding out into the wider, broader, subconscious territory, I have begun to now, while I am awake, experience that as me also. And what I feel, and again in simple words, the subconscious is, is the environment. Everything I see all around me, I equate with the subconscious. So I've begun to experience myself not just here. I've begun to experience myself as the environment and what's right here. And I can still tell the difference. Um, but there's not the separation between the environment and myself. There's not the degree of separation there was before all of this started. Um, before all of this started, you know, I've been a practicing yogi all my life. You know, I started at age 12. So it's not like I'm unfamiliar with the concept, you know, of all being one <laughs> and things along this line. But I was not experiencing this. I was not experiencing it in my body. I could entertain the idea in my mind. I could even grasp it and get sort of an ethereal flavor of, of what that was like. But I did not experience it fully, tangibly, through the body, the way I am right now. That took my consciousness opening out into the subconscious environment. All right, so um, that's the biggest change I'm experiencing.